Mm-hmm. Fine. I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to find out the indices for the direction C. As we can see in this figure, this is the direction C. And we'll be finding out its Miller indices. Let's quickly get started and see how we can do that. And the first step is to define the coordinate system. And we can see the coordinate system is predefined and this is the positive x-axis this is the positive y-axis and this is the positive z-axis and this point where all of these axis lines touch each other is known as origin so this is the origin for our calculation throughout and this step is really important because it gives you you know the reference point to have all these calculations and sometimes the coordinate system is predefined and in other cases it's not so that is why the step one is always to define and uh, acknowledge the coordinate system that you are going to use now the step two is to find out the tail coordinates we can see where the tail of the direction is so this is the direction c and we can see the tail is located at this point here as you can see this one so this is where the tail is let's find out its coordinates and by coordinates we mean that starting from origin how much we have to move along x y and z direction in order to reach that tail point so let's see this is the origin and we need to reach the tail point so we'll move one unit along positive x direction to reach this point or right this corner and since we moved from one corner of the unit cell to the other corner of the unit cell we moved one unit okay and this motion should be along the axis direction so we moved one unit along x direction and we reached the this corner and now from this point onward we need to move one by three unit along positive z direction in order to reach the tail point luckily they have already told us that this point is one by three so we'll be using this information they have already told us that what this point is so this is one by three we move one by three along z-axis and we don't need to move along y direction so the y coordinate will be taken as zero so we can see that the tail coordinates were determined in that way and the tail coordinates are determined as one zero and one by three these are the tail coordinates. The step two is done. Now the step three is to determine the head coordinates. All right, so we can see where the head is. Here is the head located. And uh, we can see that the points are also given. Some points are also given. So let's start from origin. And we'll move one unit along the positive y direction because uh, we can see that the point head point is located here at the side, this plane, okay? This point is head is located at this plane so we need to reach at y equals to one point so i moved one unit along positive y direction to reach this point now from this point onwards we can you know have this projection and we can see that this is half along x okay and this is half along z as well like this vertical distance because one by two one by two points were also given so you can have an estimate like uh, what they are so what i have to do is like from this point onwards i'll move half unit along positive x direction to reach this point and from this point onwards i'll move one by two unit along positive z direction to reach the head point all right and you can have an easy estimate you know you can see that this distance that you have traveled is half the total distance so that was really easy we can see that one along y half along x and half along z that is what we need to move in order to reach the head point and these are the head coordinates and uh, you can see that they doesn't mention that uh, what these you know points are for for example whether they are for x y or z you can have a good estimate because you can see that this point is located at this plane and at this plane y is equals to one holds okay so it means that this half and half value is for the other two axes which are x and z so half and half are the coordinates for the head along the x and z coordinates not for y all right so we can see that the coordinates that we got for the head point are actually one by two for x one for y and one by two for z in this way we have determined the tail coordinates and head coordinates and it was really easy in that case in this particular example because we can see all these points are given and we can easily determine where the head and tail points are but in some other cases when the difficulty level increases they doesn't tell you that what this point is what this point is exactly you have to determine it yourself so i'll be doing that kind of examples as well in future where this information is not given and we will be using our method uh, i'll mention one of the method that is really accurate 
and will help you to determine these points yourself really quick and accurately so we'll be doing it later let's now let's jump into the step four the step four is to subtract the tail coordinates from head coordinates so we'll be doing this thing head minus tail coordinates and here i'll draw a column here we'll do the subtraction for x coordinates here we'll do the subtraction for y coordinates and here we'll be doing the subtraction for the z coordinates and the first coordinate you can see that it's for x this is for y and this is for z so since it's head minus tail coordinates first we'll have the head coordinate one by two minus the tail coordinate which is one so one by two minus one and then we for y one minus zero for z it's one by two minus one by three let's subtract them and see what we will get so one by two minus one is actually minus one by two one minus zero is one one by two minus one by three we can have an lcm in rough work so it's three by three minus two so it's one by six all right and we can see that we have fractions in there and whenever we have fractions we have to remove this fraction so the step five is to remove fractions if any okay since we have fractions so we will multiply the lcm of denominators with each of these numbers in order to remove the fraction so for that purpose we'll finding out we'll be finding out the lcm in rough work so in denominator we have two and six so we'll be finding out the lcm for two and six two ones are and two threes are three ones are and three ones are so it's two two, two threes are six we'll multiply by six by each of these numbers above numbers okay to remove the fractions so we'll have this column here as well let's do that we have minus 1 by 2 multiply by 6 1 multiply by 6 then 1 by 6 multiply by 6 let's cancel out word cancel so it's two ones are two threes are it's minus 3 as a result it's 6 and 6 6 cancels out and it's 1 we can see here that we have got minus 3 6 and 1 and they are in least integer form as well they cannot be reduced further and there is not a single number that can divide that can divide them further so that can completely divide them further for example if you divide them by 3 then it will become 1 here it will become 2 here but it will become 1 by 3 here a fraction is involved so that is not allowed and hence these are the final indices first is x minus 3 which is 3 and a bar over it then 6 and then 1 enclosed in these square brackets these are the final miller indices or the miller indices for direction c it was super easy and we just need to find out the head and tail coordinates accurately so the tricky thing that we have in finding out the miller indices is to determine the tail and head coordinates uh, from the figure that is given and after doing that we just need to subtract the tail coordinates from head coordinates doing that we will see whether they are fractions or not if they are fractions remove the fractions and after removing the fractions make sure that the number that you have got are in least integer form and if they are in least integer form the number that you have got after all of these steps are the actually the final miller indices for the direction whose miller indices you wanted to calculate so that is it for this video we'll be doing it for the direction d as well in next video so stay tuned and keep watching Goodbye.